If there's any chance of my husband and myself going and the children going squatting again, we'd be very grateful to go. Because they were the only people that had the decency to help us. The Camden Council have not. authorities in this country, both central and local, have failed absolutely to solve the housing situation. The situation still gets worse, and it has become blatantly obvious that the authorities cannot and will not solve the housing situation. The time, therefore, is ripe for ordinary people themselves to take action against the authorities and to build a movement of direct action uh, of their own. Until the authorities of Kensington do something about Maggie O'Shannon's wretched housing condition, she is squatting at number 7 Camelford Road. Three, three pound five. Eight. 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 Two damp rooms. Two damp rooms. And in the house is one bar for us on what kind of fire was it? Electric. Electric. Now what have you got? Bronchial? Did you know that? Bronchial trouble? Bronchial trouble. That means, and where'd you get bronchial trouble? I had it when the trains were starting. Sorry, yeah? I had it when the trains were starting. Oh, I see. Basement. Should. Should. Be. Closed. Closed. That says, come and support her stand. Now, come and support let's have a look at that. It's about everybody. Ten families. Ten families. Are. Are. Homeless. Homeless. Millions. Overcrowded slums. Yet still luxury flats are built and decent houses left empty. What did you say? Now, listen. What's your reading like, John? Like that, like that. I like. What do you mean? It's better than that? No. It's worse than that. Have you been to John? Why can we not pick water and get electric? Why can we not pick. Mummy, why can we not get some electric fire? Because. In the words of Sir Morby Crofton, leader of the Borough Council, if the working class can't afford to live in Kensington, they will have to leave. But to where? Over 70% of households in North Kensington are rented from private landlords. Only 7.6% are council tenancies. Property owners can get government grants with which to improve their property. They can then sell or rent at higher prices. This excludes working class families. Ultimate security, nil. Control over property dealings, nil. Tenants cooperatives, nil. This is the environment. This is the world of hidden speculation. A typical example, one to nine Colville Gardens. A few years ago, over 200 families lived there. Now that it is valued at £120,000, it is almost empty. The landlord will have bought out or harassed out the tenants to get a vacant possession. Landlords can give furnished tenants one month's notice to get out in order to sell their property. This house has been empty for the past nine months in the street. It's in perfectly good condition, and I don't see why that it should be left empty the day that there's people, a lot of people, in the same condition as me. A lot of 
and maybe more soft than what I am because they're, they're more well rounded. Now I've got a child, of, a little boy of ten and a half, and a girl of nine and a half in in one in the one bed. And if that isn't overcrowded, then I'm worried. And on top of that, there's no comfort down there. Everybody in the street was under the impression that we were getting the house this year, early this year. Specifically, the basement. It was supposed to close up every basement just after Christmas. And uh, now we've been informed that we'll all have to wait five years. Well, by the plans that we were shown, I don't think they're going to rehouse anybody in the same area. And to be quite honest with you, from the attitude of the local council, I don't think that they want any of our type of people because, after all, we're only working class. For Maggie, a victory. She wins a rent book, a tenancy, and the demolition of the slums of Camelford Road five years earlier than the council had intended. But what happens now? The next target, private property. Two families, the Lees and the Lewises, squatted in 43 Artesian Road. This house was bought by Oscanini Enterprises nine years ago and kept empty ever since. The property value has now increased. After two weeks, the families squatting in the house were evicted by the landlord, helped by the police. The force of law was used to aid property rackets. The house is empty again. The windows boarded up. The profit for Oscanini Enterprises increases. Uh, you right. We're the upstairs. We have got the downstairs barricaded, but if the police uh, decide to come in, as they did yesterday morning, well, they can smash their way through barricades like that, but they can't smash their way through the barricades on the stairs because these are very heavy boats. But if the policies of one of the meanest boroughs in London is inadequate, what are the borough of Ilford? There, development means the demolition of over 900 good houses to provide council office space and five multi-storey car parks. So grandiose is the scheme that planning permission has not yet been granted and there is no guarantee that the council can afford to complete or even start the project. Although 2,000 complaints have been lodged, Houses are already being left empty in preparation for the 1978 demolition. These are houses that could mean homes for those in the hostels and slums of the East End. People who come to uh, have volunteered to come forward and act as guards, which we will need, because if we are attacked, we will need to defend every window upstairs. We need people, in, you know, several people in the house as well as the family, until we can get other people here. We are now embarked upon a campaign of pressure upon the Redbridge District Council to compel them to give these families rent books, to allow these families to stay. And one of the things we shall certainly be doing, if there is any attempt to evict these families, if they get themselves eventually a court order and ask the police to enforce it and try to evict these families, then there will be immediately a massive demonstration, as big as we can possibly make it, and by that I mean leaving cars parked across the high street, and we shall have the names and addresses and phone numbers of every councillor and every official, and we will have the key points of Ilford picked out, and well, we won't, I won't have to tell you what we'll do, you can guess the sort of things that we will be doing. But we're going to make it absolutely clear that we will do anything necessary to ensure that these families are kept in here. We could probably bring an action against the police for forcible entry. On June the 2nd, the Home Office stated, the occupation of private property without permission is not in itself a criminal offence. February the 26th, Olive and Ricky Mercer squatted in 81 Cortland Avenue. On March the 20th, they were illegally evicted. This is Barry Quatermain, who, with his professional bailiffs, carried out illegal evictions on the instructions from Redbridge Borough Council. His address, Goose Hill, Red Lane, Claygate, Isha, Surrey. His business address, Southern Provincial Investigations, 45 Brighton Road, Surbiton. On March the 20th, on orders from the council,
His gang broke open the door of 81 Cortland Avenue and set upon the family of Ricky and Olive Mercer. Quatermain is the man who pushed Olive three months pregnant in the stomach with an iron bar. They are the ones who attacked her again, causing her miscarriage. On the 21st of April, another family, the Beresfords, were evicted from Grosvenor Road, Ilford. My husband and I jumped up and we heard footsteps running up the stairs and a voice saying, take the top rooms first. About eight men burst into our bedroom and told us to get up as we've been evicted. We could hear sounds from the children's bedroom and some of the children were crying and men was in there chucking out furniture already. I had to go downstairs to get the baby's coat and I was told to hurry up and get out the fucking way as I was a nuisance. I took the coat upstairs to the woman police sergeant who was dressing the children and she finished dressing the children and she took them downstairs to a van and locked them in. And then she came back for me and frog, me march, frog marched me down the stairs with six men behind me ready to hurt me if um, I offered resistance. We was then driven back to here, council buildings, and we was put in here and left. On the same day, the Flemings were evicted from the house in which they had been squatting. One of the squatters was attacked as he dressed and his jaw broken. Meanwhile, the bailiffs harassed the children as their parents dressed. As soon as the family left, council workmen went in. 43 Cleveland Road is now a wreck. These illegal evictions were supervised by Mr. H.W. Moss, the GLC Eastern Valuer. This is Ilford Town Hall, and these are the names of the accessories to illegal evictions. Alderman Cowan, Dalton, and Waters. Councillors Caradice, Escott, Hill, Hurst, Natzler, Telford, Miss Clark, and Mrs. Roberts. Not one is on record as opposing the decision to evict. Councillor Young was interrupted by Alderman Cowan who said that we was not fit to live amongst decent human beings as we needed to go back to council buildings to be rehabilitated so that we could live amongst decent human beings. Mr H. W. Moss was acting under instructions from Mr Kenneth Blessy, Chief Valuer and Estate Agents at County Hall who was acting under instructions from Mr. Roland Freeman, chairman of the GLC Finance Committee. Under the cloak of authority, all can say, I am not responsible. Six Woodlands Road in Ilford. It's been destroyed by the council to stand in this state until 1977, as it's in the second stage of the Central Ilford Redevelopment Area. I say 1977, this is the earliest possible date, if at all, as the redevelopment scheme has not yet been approved by the Ministry and there are over 2,000 objections. The scheme involves the extension of the council offices the building of shops, the building of five multi-storey car parks and other such social amenities like this for which we have to pay the price of destruction of over 900 houses, many of them remaining in this state for eight or nine or ten years. This is our answer to the council's eviction of the 21st of April. We will continue to repair all 36 of the wrecked houses throughout the dozen or so rows in the Ilford central area. Last Monday, Barry Quartermain's group of hired thugs again visited Ilford. Most of us were out at the time and they gained access and started to evict the Flemings. Strangely enough and happily enough on this occasion, the police said they were not going to allow the eviction to proceed without a court order. And when some of us arrived, we promptly 
threw out the bailiffs, frog marched them to the gate and threw them over the gate. And when Mr Quatermain came back from the town hall, having received further instructions, a scuffle developed between himself and me, during which he broke my glasses and I gave him a black eye. At five o'clock on Wednesday morning, he brought 15 of his thugs to Woodlands Road, armed with helmets, crowbars, rocks, and dustbin lids for shields, ladders and goggles, they made an assault on Woodlands Road. They then came here for another assault on this house. And when they started to throw rocks through the front room, wind front room upstairs windows, we threw them back. And we gave, once again, better than we got. And all in all that morning, Mr Quartermain's mob were, for the first time, unsuccessful. They took a hammering. These evictions by Council and Quartermain were absolutely and entirely illegal. A court order is necessary to evict people, even squatters. This is laid down quite clearly in the Forcible Entry Act of 1381. This act says that nobody shall take possession of land, whether rightfully or wrongfully, with strong hand or multitude of people. The fact that anybody may have a just claim to land is absolutely irrelevant. One must not take, enforce that claim with using force of numbers or force or violence in any way at all. Our idea is propaganda by deed. We're hoping to show that small groups can take on the authorities and win conclusively, despite all odds. Having done this, the squatters groups will spread, direct action groups will spread. Groups which are trying to take power away from the authorities in small ways will spread all over the place. And these groups, of course, will liaise and coordinate with each other. And, you know, a situation of dual power almost uh, starts to develop. And if people try this, they'll realise that the whole system is stacked against them. All the odds are against them. And that, um, it's not just a question of housing, it's a question of the system as a whole. And perhaps they should, therefore, get together with building workers and take control of the building industry. The squatting is the start of this.